the dropshipping fulfillment model, and I'm going to be um, giving you my thoughts on why I think dropshipping is uh, the most efficient way to launch a brand right now, and why I think it's the platform that is going to give you a better return on investment in terms of your marketing, your digital marketing platforms, and all of the outlets that are essential today to um, get an e-commerce brand off the ground. So. Before we go into that, um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and who I am and what I do. My name is uh, George Vieira. I'm coming from ecommercementoring.com. Um, our company was founded by Camille Satar, commonly known as the Ecom King. And what we do is we assist new business owners and companies in uh, starting their online business, launching new brands, and scaling them to um, higher revenue in. Uh, by using and taking advantage of digital marketing and integrated digital marketing strategies, which I'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, I also have my colleague here with me, Mr. George Gabriel. He's also from e-commerce mentoring, um, and we'll be happy to ask uh, any questions that you have about uh, growing your online business after the, the speaking event. So from my, my experience, um, I, ha I started as an e-commerce entrepreneur myself. Um, I'm running uh, my own e-commerce brand, which has been going very well since earlier the, this year. We've scaled it to multiple six figures already. I'm also a digital marketing consultant with ecommercementoring.com, and I am a mentor at the same company. Being a mentor, what we do essentially is we accompany new business owners and companies who come to us and ask us for digital marketing strategies to grow new businesses, to launch new brands, and we, we, um, we consult with them in order to draft up a plan and grow um, their companies. This is the overview of what I want to go over today. I want to go over what is dropshipping and why dropshipping. And to do that, I'm going to be comparing the dropshipping fulfillment model with some of the most famous platforms that are used today to launch new e-commerce brands, such as um, Amazon FBA, eBay, and your conventional fulfillment, which is, of course, you have your online store and you just you receive the orders from your customers, you pack them in a box and you ship them and you handle everything by yourself. Of course, as you can imagine, the downside to this is um, the workload that is associated with and the limited scalability that you have. Obviously, if you're doing in-house fulfillment, your upfront costs are going to be uh, much higher, but we'll get into that in a moment. So first, just to clear everything up, what is dropshipping? Dropshipping is a fulfillment model. So the word dropshipping is not a business model itself, and that's something that's very important to clear up first. Um, the business model is, of course, e-commerce. Dropshipping is a fulfillment model. So what it means is that you don't have to store any inventory in your warehouse or you don't have to handle any inventory yourself. You have someone else that does it for you and connects with your manufacturer. So what it means is that you merely receive, you do the marketing, you receive the orders from your customers and you connect your platform with an agent that will connect with the manufacturer and will um, store the product and take care of all the logistics shipping the product to your customers. So you don't have to touch any inventory. And when you're working with dropshipping agents, we're talking about um, agents with big warehouses and a lar large fulfillment capacity. So they can, um, in a very short a period of time, go from shipping five orders a day to 500 orders a day. So all that you have to worry about is making sure that your marketing and your front-end platform is sustainable enough to be able to handle all of this volume. You don't have to worry about manufacturing overload. You don't have to worry about ordering inventory up front. You don't have to worry about fulfilling the orders, none of the logistics. So all of that is handled by your dropshipping agent. And this makes your business a lot more um, flexible to be able to scale and to just adapt to anything that you might want to do. So this is a very quick summary of dropshipping. And now I want to compare dropshipping with some of the most uh, famous um, ways to start an online business right now, which of course most of you all know, Amazon FBA, a marketplace for platform like eBay, for example, or the traditional model where you just get the orders, you put your products in a box and you ship them out, you know, just like everyone was doing before. So the first big thing about 
the dropshipping fulfillment model. And this is why I have this board here. I'm just going to get out of the way so you can see it. Um, is that you control your customer data. So you have, if you notice here, I've marked in green the upsides, in red the downsides, and yellow is just so-and-so. It's not so good, but it's not a big issue. And I made it here too, so you can see that dropshipping takes the best of all the platforms into one model. If you see, let's start with the traditional business model, which everyone knows. Um, which is, of course, you have your store, you put up an online store, your customers place orders with you, they pay, and then you take your products, you put them in a box, and you have a shipping partner, you, your shipping partner picks up your boxes and ships the product to your customers. You know, everyone knows this model. You, could, you control your customer data, and this, this is going to be a big point in here. Having control of customer data is a huge thing, and I'll, I'll explain why it is a huge thing in a moment. But in your traditional model, and that's actually the only advantage right now of the traditional model, you do control your customer data because your customers place your orders with you, they give you their data, so it's all on you. There's no third-party platform like Amazon or eBay that holds control over your customer data. But you need a large upfront investment, of course, because you're making your store yourself. You're gonna be buying inventory. If you want a custom-made product, you want to have a designer, you want to have all of these things that go into creating a product. So it's a big upfront investment. You must have inventory, of course, because you start getting orders, you have to ship them, so you have to have inventory. Of course, this also implies that you need to have a place to put your inventory, a warehouse. There's warehouse storage fees, you have to deal with all of that. And of course, you must handle the shipping, and the shipping is expensive. For example, um, our company is based in the UK, so if, if you're shipping products out of the UK and you're shipping them from um, a regular shipping company like DHL or FedEx or UPS, shipping from the UK is expensive, especially if you have a low volume. You're, you're, you're getting the, the shipping company to come over to your business to get the packages and ship them out, like five, ten packages for a week. That's going to be expensive for you, so your shipping costs are going to be um, pretty heavy. Now. If we compare it to a marketplace platform next, that would be eBay, for example. You have no control over your customer data because eBay is an intermediary. eBay handles the payments. Um, you have a small upfront investment because you, only, you can only uh, ship what uh, you get ordered, so you don't have to have a lot of inventory. Um, but you still must handle shipping. So people place the order with you and you're responsible for shipping, of course, even with eBay. So if there's an issue with shipping, you're going to be responsible and you have to be the intermediary between the platform and the shipping, the logistics company. In terms of Amazon FBA, you have no control over customer data either. Amazon does that. You have no control over your marketing. Amazon does that as well, which is a very hands-off experience and it might look like it is um, a more appealing experience. But, um, of course, you don't get to leverage your customer data in a way as if you were um, doing everything yourself. And that is the big advantage of the dropshipping fulfillment model. You have a front end, just like you had in the traditional model. Everything is the same, but you get all the customer data in your control. So. Um, your customer emails, for example, your email data is very, very valuable. You can get up to 30% uh, more in terms of email revenue. And my colleague here, uh, Mr. Gabriel, uh, has an email agency, so he knows this very well. And he can definitely answer any questions that you have about email marketing and the importance of leveraging your customer data to boost um, your revenue. So after this comparison, how do we um, transition into dropshipping from a traditional business model? And um, how does that transition go? What are the advantages? What can we expect to gain from it? Now, if I said, if you're in, you're in control, so if you want to do a, a store that you want to use for dropshipping, these are the two main platforms that you can use, um, Shopify and WooCommerce. They're very easy to access. Any beginner can get, make an account and use um, one of these platforms. Shopify is more beginner friendly. You don't need any coding knowledge. You don't need any web dev uh, de development Excuse me, knowledge. Um, it's just a very user-friendly interface. WooCommerce is a little bit more advanced. So if you know WordPress, for example, if you're familiar with WordPress, then you can go with WooCommerce, but it does require a little bit of uh, knowledge 
in terms of web development beforehand, so it's more advanced. Both of them are relatively easy, of course, as compared to hiring a designer and making everything from scratch, and the costs are nothing uh, to be compared, you know. Uh, a Shopify uh, subscription costs you $30 a month, so it's nothing like the investment of making uh, a traditional web, web store from, from scratch. You also get access to competitive costs, and that's a big thing. If you're working with a dropshipping agent, your dropshipping agent is working with multiple manufacturers. And if your dropshipping agent is working with multiple manufacturers, that means that they have higher volumes and they can negotiate much better prices than if you were just ordering a small quantity of products. Same with the logistics companies. They handle uh, multiple orders, many, many orders every day, and they have very good contracts with the logistics companies. So they're able to give you much better prices that you wouldn't be able to get if you were shipping everything from your own warehouse or even from your own place. And of course, as I said, it's your data. So the ever so valuable customer data is fully in your control. So you can just leverage it from email marketing and any other channels that can um, increase your, your revenue from. Because it's very important to also keep in mind when we're doing digital marketing, we're not just paying for ads. We're paying for information as well. We're paying to know who your audience is. We're paying to know who our customers are. And if we just sell them a product and then we forget that they exist, we're leaving money on the table and we're leaving a lot of money on the table. We need to leverage the data that we get from the digital marketing platforms to extract all the value of what we pay in terms of ad spend. And that includes retargeting campaigns, it includes integrated approaches into multiple platforms so we can approach our customers where they already are spending most of their time. And this is the, the main thing about um, being in control of your data. You're able to reach your customers wherever they may be. Um, as I was saying, uh, the platforms that we use are very intuitive, like Shopify and WooCommerce. It's very easy to source products, so if you want a product to sell, if you want to look for the product to sell, your agent already works with multiple manufacturers, so you just, you're able to contact them and say, I am in the cosmetics niche, for example, and you can talk to them and you can get them to show you the products that their manufacturers have available, and then you can work with them, develop your own line of products. It's very easy. You don't have to go and hire a chemist to develop your own uh, body lotion or anything like that. You have access to um, an experienced agent who can just make the process a lot simpler, you know, and the big thing about dropshipping, um, as you can extract from this information that I'm giving you, is the barrier to entry. The barrier to entry is very low compared to other models. You don't have to get the most value out of your customers. Also, Facebook. This is where Facebook comes in in this strategy. Usually, Facebook comes in here for cold audience, but if you place Facebook here, you can increase your profit margins because Facebook is an expensive platform and Facebook can leverage the data that you have from before to target your cold, your, um, excuse me, your warm audiences and your hot audience. So your cold audience comes in from here, comes into your website. You get the data. Facebook will know who the people are that are coming to your website. And then you can tell Facebook now, Please take this sample of people that came to my website and create an audience that is very closely associated to the people that have come to my website. And Facebook can do that for you. Facebook can create an audience that is similar to the people who have visited your, audience, your website before. And in this way, you're going to be using Facebook, the expensive traffic, to go for people who are not cold anymore. You're going for warm, and you're going for hot audiences on Facebook only. So you're using the expensive platform to get the most possible value instead of using it for cold traffic. You can use cold traffic on cheap platforms, then leverage the data that you have, and then you use Facebook's algorithm to target people that are very closely related to your audience. And this way, you already know who your audience is, and you're targeting the people that are most interested in your business. This is just an example of how you can use the agility of the dropshipping fulfillment model with an integrated digital marketing strategy. This is one, there are many more of course, depending on the business, this has to be adjusted. Um, but it's an example of how you can make your business very agile to reach your customers wherever they may be. So in this one, we have four different platforms. We have Snapchat, we have TikTok, we have Google, we have email, we have Facebook. All of this 
And this is fully automated, by the way. You don't need to touch any of this. You set this up, you have to monitor your numbers regularly, but you don't have to actively be doing anything. This is all based on machine learning. This is all AI. You just set it and you leave it. You just check back regularly to make sure that your numbers match your goals. And you have all this backend in place. Your customers are coming in, you're getting your orders, and all you need to do is worry about your game plan, your products, and uh, expanding your brand. Thank you for listening. This is what I had to, to give you about the dropshipping fulfillment model. Um, if you want to um, connect with us, uh, we're going to be on the floor. This is uh, also my YouTube channel, my Instagram, and my Facebook. And um, I'm going to be at 5.30 p.m. today doing a meetup with anyone that wants to discuss um, in their e-commerce business at the Hotel Melia Frankfurt at 5.30 p.m. if anyone wants to come. So we'll be um, open to taking any questions if anyone has any questions. Thank you so much and have a great day.